Started off Tuesday's training session with a top end set on the floor press, 275 pounds for a set of four. Now, as you know, 25 pound plates and 45 pound plates are iconic milestones on all lifts. 35 pound plates, not as exciting. Tens and fives, not so much either. Encouraging to hit PRs, but those 25s and those 45s, that's when you do the mental fist pump. And this was one of those days getting that 275 on the floor press before backing it off to four sets of four with 243 pounds. Afterwards, building out that foundation of volume and getting that rep work in with those heavier loads, acclimating to that increased stress, not just on the muscular system, but also on the skeletal system, on the joints in general. Went from here into some hammer grip wide pull downs, employing the short bar variation as opposed to the long bar that I have access to. My forearms were shot by the end of this set, but that is often the case when employing high rep work with moderately heavy loads on lat pull downs, as is the case on cable rows as well. Then I transitioned into the overhead earthquake bar press, and interestingly enough, I'm still running a linear progression on this variation, and I'm still clearing sets of 10. I'm kind of surprised, considering I'm pretty close to my 10 rep max, as would be on a traditional straight bar. And that's kind of confusing to me, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume it's because I've developed so much strength since the last time that I did a traditional overhead press that I'm much stronger on it now, and I'm comparing an outdated number, as would be why I'm coming so close to them being one-to-one. -one. If that's not the case, and I'll know when I get back under the overhead press whether or not my lift skyrocket, which could definitely happen, if that's not the case, I'm not entirely sure why they would have a one-to-one -one ratio, and that's kind of confusing to me, and we'll have to figure it out. Finished off this upper body training session with some incline spoon presses and some thick rope tricep press downs, and that was a wrap. The triceps were more than adequately pumped, and now we're moving on to leg day. Started off Thursday morning strong with a 211 pound walking lunge for four repetitions per leg. And this is incredible to me considering that we're north of 200 pounds and we're doing multiple reps per leg on a lunge, on a lunge. I remember the first time I squatted 205 pounds, which is just around this amount and it was near impossible. Now I'm doing walking lunges with it. How incredible is it to see your physical capacity develop over time? I backed off the lunges to two working sets of four per leg as well with 190 pounds. Even that's wild to me, having over a plate and a quarter on each side for an exercise like the lunge. The lunge! We're closing in on that ego milestone three plates per side. We're so far still, but we're definitely a lot closer than we ever have been and a lot closer than we otherwise would have been if we didn't take lunges seriously in consideration of volume and intensity percentages as we are now. As soon as these lunges were done, we flipped into that conditioning circuit, this time getting the squat and press going with 60 pound dumbbells in each hand, six repetitions before transitioning into a sled sprint across the turf and back with 315 pounds. Three consecutive rounds of this, and then I finished off this training session with those overhead earthquake bar walks. As I mentioned, I don't really know why I've put these in there. I just like to mix things in from time to time and experiment with them. It's fun to do. That's kind of why I have this lab at my disposal, my giant play pen. And I can tell you that it definitely works the core doing these earthquake bar overhead walks, and it's certainly contributing to endurance in the shoulder. How beneficial it will be in consideration of carryover to other exercises, I'm really not entirely sure yet, but as I mentioned, I like to experiment here and there with different exercises because that's one of the best ways to learn is through experience. So it's official, as of Saturday morning, my plate weighted dip has become my strongest loaded pressing exercise that I can execute 325 pounds for a top end set of four. This has surpassed my bench press, which is incredible. I'm very encouraged by this because it will have an evident carryover to my bench press. And I feel like I definitely have more in the tank on the weighted dip. This is probably why the weighted dip is a staple in the regiments of some of the top lifters to ever walk the earth. Backed it off to four sets of four at 292 and a half pounds respectively before transitioning into some cable rows with a supinated hand position, really targeting the biceps and the grip as well, along with the mid back development. And then I worked on the neutral grip trap bar row with the T-bar setup. Again, I'm not really a fan of this variation. I don't like it, but I also don't dislike it yet. So the vote is still 
out. It's not all that difficult, but it definitely is targeting the right muscles. So maybe it's a matter of loading or maybe I should scrap this all together, but I haven't decided yet. But here we are again with that experimentation phase before moving into the lying kettlebell tricep extensions. Have the 20 pound kettlebells rolling significant increase in intensity. I didn't enjoy that increase in intensity at all. I need to find a way to micro load these kettlebells because a 25% increase considering I was at a 15 and then I jumped to a 20 is not the way to go about this and they are so effective at targeting the triceps that I don't want to have to scrap them because I can't make unreasonable increases in relative application of stress. We'll figure something out. We'll find a way. We always do. Regardless, this was a great upper body training session and I wrapped it up with two sets of 10 on the body weight tricep extension, set up the bar on the squat rack and then cranked out the two sets. I can tell you that my triceps were definitely trying by the end of this training session. They were shot. They got beat up pretty bad, especially trying to maintain that kettlebell position on the previous exercise. I was done like dinner. Sunday morning, uh, leg day today. A lot of volume under the bar. Eight sets of four with 368 and a half pounds. So it's not the heaviest weight I've ever moved for that many, but it's the first time I've been over 365 in probably a couple months because I've been working so diligently on building up that foundation of volume. So now that we're moving into those lower rep ranges again, starting to really increase the load. Now this is the most times I've been under this much weight in one training session. By the time the workout is done, that'll be 32 yeah, yep, 32 repetitions over 365 pounds. That's pretty significant for me, so I'm looking forward to that. And all eight sets went smoothly. My lockouts were definitely much more powerful than coming out of the hole, especially as we got into set six, seven, and eight respectively, but I managed to maintain a degree of consistency and consideration of execution throughout all of the repetitions. I was proud. Then I pulled 424 for four off a one inch deficit. That felt pretty badass considering my deficit deadlift is starting to calculate out pretty freaking close to my normal conventional deadlift off the floor. Finished off this training session with some reverse hyper work 185 for five sets of 10. As you know, this is a staple in my training and that wrapped up a very Progressive week in the weight room under the bar.